Today on Rock the Park. This is incredible. Manatee right below us. Experiencing Florida's natural treasures. Big gator right there in front of the boat, guys. Oh, do you see Oh him? my gosh, oh my gosh. Some more dangerous than others. There's an eight foot snake here. So stay where you are. Okay. Wow. The Sunshine State surprises us every time we visit. Shark, shark, shark. shark. I got a shark right in front of me. This is the best of Florida. Making dreams come true. That's what we're doing today, boys. <laughs> and it all starts right now. Yeah, baby. Yes. I'm Jack Stewart. This is the real deal. And I'm Colton Smith. These Man. are mountains. We've been buddies for years. Always in search of the next adventure. Dude, what was that? We share a passion for our national parks and other wild places around Ooh. the world. Oh my Man. God. Heading off the beaten path, pushing our Ooh. limits, Ooh. and experiencing nature's best kept secrets. Here we go. <laughs> it's how we rock the park. Not many places can match the natural beauty of Florida. From the world-class beaches of the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic, to the largest coral reef system in the continental US, Florida is home to one-of-a-kind wilderness. So choosing our favorite adventures is tough, but hands down, all of them include wildlife. We're starting in the Everglades, one of the world's largest tropical wetlands that protects rare and endangered plants and animals. The Everglades are incredible. It's a maze of water, trees, and marshes, and that can make navigating through it a little tricky and a little unnerving. That's because some of the top predators on Earth live there, and they're hard to spot until you're right up on top of them. All right, you guys ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Let's do it. Marshall Jones's family has lived in the Everglades for five generations. He knows what he's doing, and he's got the right boat. We're going through this tall grass, and then all of a sudden, we come out, and we get our first look at the Everglades, and it's mind-blowing. And it doesn't take long for us to spot the one thing we want to see most. Marshall calls out that he sees an alligator. Look at that thing. Alligators are huge reptiles that have been around for millions of years. They're opportunistic feeders that wait for something edible to pass nearby and then lunge at it with incredible speed. You can see how scary that is, too, because you can only see his head. Right. And it's barely sticking out of the water. You would not be able to see that thing coming. That's actually a mama gator. Female alligators generally lay their eggs in the summer, and they hatch in early fall. The mother alligator will fiercely protect her young for several years. We wisely decide to give mama and her babies their space and travel on to a much deeper spot. Big gator right there in front of the boat, guys. Oh, do you see oh him? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Man, that thing's huge. Oh my gosh. Look at oh. how big his head is. Female alligators rarely exceed 10 feet, but males grow much larger and can weigh more than 1,000 pounds. You see his teeth? He's eyeing you. Oh, he's really eyeing me. Oh, oh. man, oh my gosh. Catching a glimpse of an alligator on an airboat was the perfect way to start, and after that, we felt like we were ready to explore on our own. So we decided to paddle a tandem kayak through an eight-mile stretch of the Everglades Turner River. All yeah. right. We're cruising straight into Alligator Alley. Oh, yeah. We thought the alligators and venomous snakes would be a problem, but everything about this first foray into the Everglades is complicated. Oh, no. This is where it's going to become like a maze. Yeah. All right, you're steering us, right? I got us. It's All right. To the best of my ability. Oh, man. Look at these things. Wow. Mangrove trees have massive stilt-like root systems. They can form a barrier that's great for protecting coastal areas from erosion. It's not so great for tandem kayakers like us. I'm trying to grab onto the branches. I'm trying to call what's out in front of us. There's branches, there's spider webs, there's limbs of trees that are smacking me in the face. I'm getting roughed up. Oh my gosh, look at all these spiders. Look at all those spiders. Oh, oh, that's a big spider. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 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 Oh, 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 o
<laughs> Thankfully, our kayaking and water skills have drastically improved over the years. And that's a good thing, because Florida's coastline is a haven for all sorts of creatures. Shark. 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 Right there. Where? I got a shark right in front of me. There's another one right out here in front of me. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. We've entered into Shark Alley. Just south of Miami, Biscayne National Park is made up of mostly water. We're in a remote lagoon with our guide, Captain Hans. Nurse shark, their teeth are fused together and they make bony plates in their mouths. And they feed on crustaceans. So what they'll do is when they find something, they just bite down on it and crush the shell. If you were to stick your hand in the mouth of a nurse shark and it bit you, it wouldn't bite your hand off. What? Mm -hmm. It could break every bone in your hand. Right, but it wouldn't. But it wouldn't bite your hand off. That's amazing. So they're built to be able to, they create, to eat those crustaceans. Yeah, to just crush the shells of, uh, of crustaceans. Wow. Sharks play an important role in regulating this ecosystem. It's the animals that don't belong here that are causing major problems. They are pretty much a, a perfect invader. Florida is a beautiful state, but its wild spaces are under threat from pollution, climate change, and overdevelopment. As we look back on our best adventures, several involve helping eliminate another hazard, one that's impacting Biscayne Bay National Park. And one of the biggest threats to this park is something that lives in the water. 30 to 40 years ago, scientists speculate that someone dumped unwanted aquarium fish into the bay. We're talking about lionfish, and the population has just exploded off of South Florida. We got the chance to hunt down some of these invasive fish. They are pretty much a, a perfect invader because they have this voracious appetite combined with an incredible ability to hunt. And they can actually expand their stomach 30 times its empty size. So they wow. will eat and eat and eat and eat. <laughs> Which I can imagine is why they are such a problem in places where they're not native to. Absolutely. We wanted to help thin out the lionfish population, but we need to be careful because these guys are venomous and a sting from one of their spines is extremely painful. And we'll be diving with a pro, local dive master Ed Del Campo, who knows how to handle a fishing spear. Basically, this is a single pole and this is what's called a paralyzer tip or a lionfish tip. It has no barbs. Um, our goal is to pierce the fish. You want to go ahead and place that as close to the fish as you can without scooting the fish away, right? And then, and then just release your grip. Just open your hand, and that's going to come shooting out of your hand. All right. Here we go. This is it. Yeah. We swim down to 80 feet. A lot more lionfish dwell down here. Ed waves me down and hands me another spear. Now I just need to get steady before I shoot. Boom, I punch right through the lionfish, pull it out, and we've got our first catch of the day. That's one lionfish in the bag. Now it's Colton's turn, and his first shot is a hit, but it starts to wriggle loose. Ed swoops in and stows it in the spine-proof catch hole. I didn't know whether we would get any or not, and right now we've got two lionfish. We finally get our groove on and are able to spear more lionfish. Woohoo! Yeah, baby! Yes! We got him. We did it! Mission nope. accomplished! It felt really good to bag some of those guys. Invasive species like lionfish can wreak havoc and even wipe out native plants and animals. And they're not the only problem. Florida swamplands are being invaded by a creature that's threatening wildlife, destroying the ecosystem, and honestly, just freaks me out. I'm talking about the Burmese python. Several decades ago, a few pet Burmese pythons were released into the wild. Now, these massive predators are multiplying fast and eating their way through the native wildlife. Park biologists like Matthew McAllister are working to track and manage the pythons, which can grow up to 18 feet long and weigh over 100 pounds. So really, the females are the target due to the fact that they can lay an incredible amount of eggs. Yeah, as they get larger, their clutch size can, can be pretty high. They, they've had clutches recorded at over 100 eggs. Even though pythons are one of the largest snakes on Earth, they are hard to spot because they hide in grass, brush, and underwater. When biologists do catch a python, they will implant radio transmitters into the males and release them to help locate the females. 
Matthew's radio just picked one up a half a mile from the road. You see how it'd be hard to find a snake in here? Yeah. Pythons are ambush hunters. They stay motionless for hours, waiting for prey to move right in front of them. Oh, I bet this snake's within 10 yards of us. 10 yards is close for a huge snake. Is there any way for us to, do we just look for something moving or will we never see it? It won't move, you won't see it. Just hang tight. There's an eight foot snake here. So stay where you are. Okay. All right, I see it. You see him? Yeah. Oh man, he's got it. This is so nuts. So if you'll get to about right here. Okay. So can y'all see the snake? Burn oh my gosh, python. that's huge. You can wow. see his skin right from where I'm at. Wow. Oh, that's creepy. We're not gonna disturb the animal, but he's probably about that big around, eight, eight and a half feet. Some of the animals in the lab are the same size. Is there a way we could go back there and take a look at one? We'll take a look at him. As it turns out, the snakes in the lab aren't quite as motionless as the ones in the wild. Boy, here it is. Oh my gosh. I know you've you've done this a handful of times, but do you ever get nervous? Like that? <laughs> They're not too bad. Ooh, wow. Wow. Oh, there she is. That is terrifying to me. To hear oh gosh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy cow. Matthew needs to measure the snake and determine if it's a male. If so, it might be a suitable candidate for a transmitter implant. Even by just holding the tail and trying to straighten this snake out, you can feel the strength. So it's almost a three meter snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. You know, that would be close to nine and a half feet or so. All right, well, let's determine if it's a male or a female. They have a vent at the rear of their tail, and on either side of that, they'll have spurs. And on males, those spurs are typically much more pronounced. So that animal, for its size, does not have large spurs at all. Uh, so this is a female. Um, this is a female, okay. Yeah, and it won't be suitable for the program. So this snake will be euthanized, just one small step in curbing the problem. They're not native. They're not supposed to be here. It really puts to bed the fairy tale of, I'm gonna let it free and have a good life, because in doing that, you're doing something that's incredibly destructive to yep. other animals and entire ecosystem. And it's not just invasive species wreaking havoc with Florida's wild spaces. Human activity is taking its toll as well. So there's a lot of lobster traps, there's a lot of anchors, there's a lot of line from both of those that gets wrapped around the coral and entangles the coral. Florida's extensive reefs all along the Florida Keys contain some of the oldest coral on Earth. Healthy coral reefs are amazing to see, and they're incredibly important. About a quarter of all marine life either lives on or near them. The Florida Reef is one of the biggest barrier reefs in the world, but it is in serious decline right now because of climate change and pollution. Local divers are working hard to clean it up, and we got a chance to join them. Courtney Benson is part of an organization that's pulled thousands of pounds of debris from these waters. What are we gonna find down there? So there's a lot of lobster traps, there's a lot of anchors, there's a lot of line from both of those uh, that gets wrapped around the coral and entangles the coral. The debris can crush or break off existing parts of the reef and prevent new coral from growing where it lands. You said boat anchors. Right. How does that even work? So we're gonna have lift bags. Um, so we fill these up with air with our alternate. So we can lift up to about 100 pounds, 200 if we have a larger lift bag. We're heading to a depth of about 90 feet. As we swim along, we see a reef that's in decline, a result of something called coral bleaching. Coral that's stressed by changes in temperature, light, or nutrients releases algae living in its tissues. Without the algae to help create color, the coral turns white and becomes more susceptible to disease and dying. Debris makes it worse. And we're starting to find it. 
I start working on a snarl of fishing line that seems to be going on forever. While Colton's working on the line, I spot an anchor and its rope, which goes on and on. You can see how pulling on it could damage the coral. I carefully start cutting and collecting the rope, and Courtney gives me a lift bag for hoisting up the anchor. I'm using air from my tank to inflate the bag so it will act like a balloon and help lighten this load when we ascend to the surface. Even with the lift bag, this anchor is still extremely heavy, so we take turns carrying it. Wow, look Man, at this pile. That's a hole. Yeah, you guys did an awesome job for your first cleanup dive. Sweet. Yeah. It says a lot about just how much junk is being left behind and why these cleanups are so important. Scuba diving is one of my favorite things to do because it connects you so much to the ocean. This was such a unique opportunity to give back to a place that has given us so much. After we wrapped up in the Keys, we headed to the Gulf Coast of Central Florida for another unique experience. One where we got to swim with one of my all-time favorite animals. Good morning. We're in Crystal River Preserve State Park, heading out to Kings Bay, where manatees gather during the colder months. This is a bucket list thing for me. What we're doing today, I've always just loved manatees, but never have been able to get into the water with them. Since 1983, this area has been a federally designated wildlife refuge to protect the West Indian manatee, whose habitat has been diminishing. Thankfully, the numbers are on the rise and folks can come out and practice passive observation, which means we only interact with the manatees if they approach us. How I define it is when in doubt, keep your hands to yourself. So most of the time that we're out here, we're just gonna be floating and observing. Making dreams come true. That's what we're doing today, <laughs> boys. Manatees like warm water, and between November and April, the warm springs that feed this bay are at a constant 72 degrees. So this is where the manatees hang out to find shelter and feed off the vegetation below. This is incredible, manatee right below us. Wow, that is so cool. This is a juvenile. Wow. So this is, yeah, this is one of the uh, possibly smaller guides in the area. These gentle giants average about a thousand pounds, but they can get even bigger than that. Females are typically larger than males. Manatees are herbivores, and look at the size of these guys. It takes a lot of grass to feed one of these animals. They actually need to take in 150 to 300 pounds of food each day. That's why they're known as sea cows. They spend much of their time peacefully grazing. Observing these guys is quite a thrill, and just when we think it can't get any better, it does. I was just sitting there minding my own business, and he wanted to play, man. He came just within inches of me. So cool, absolutely. We're in Florida, reliving some of our best adventures, and this is certainly Colton's all-time favorite. We're snorkeling with manatees, giant sea mammals that come to feed in these warm waters during the winter. And then it happens. One of the young ones comes swimming right over to me. Not afraid whatsoever. Absolutely incredible. This is so cool, just floating here, watching them eating, coming up to the surface, and then one comes up next to me. Dude, awesome, it's amazing, man. That's a bucket list, that's a check right there. Florida's stunning scenery, unique ecosystems, and abundant wildlife make it an amazing destination for fun and adventure. Every time we're here, we discover something new. And remember, hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.